Hello and welcome you all to this new video on my channel making IT simple. Let's imagine a situation. There is a ticket counter that's about to get opened. There's already a queue present outside the counter. Now when the counter gets opened, who do you think will be served first? Yes, the first person standing in the queue because he has arrived there first before anyone else. Then afterwards the second one will get served and then the third one and so on. This principle that we have seen in this example is first come first serve. In previous video we discussed various concepts like arrival time, completion time etc. If you have not watched it do check it out link is in the description below. From this video onwards we will start covering all the scheduling algorithms. And in this today's video we will start with FCFS that is first come first serve. So there are many scheduling algorithms, each work on different scheduling principle. Basically that means which process will get executed by CPU and in which order. FCFS, our today's algorithm, schedules the process based on their arrival time. Similar to ticket counter, whoever will come first will be sent for CPU execution first. And also, FCFS is a non-preemptive scheduling algorithm. Now what does that mean? It means that once the process starts getting executed by the CPU, it will not get out until it gets completely executed. So once the process gets completely executed, then only the other processes can get sent for CPU execution. Let us understand how this FCFS works with an example. So let's say there are these five processes. Process A, B, C, D and process E. These are arrival time for each process. So process A came in ready queue at 0th millisecond and so it's first. And process E came in the ready queue at the 12th millisecond so it is last. That's because we are scheduling it based on arrival time. This over here is the burst time. Actual time required for the process to get executed. For example, Process A needs 6 milliseconds of CPU execution to get completely executed. So using GAN chart, let us see if we follow FCFS algorithm, how things will get worked. So the time starts at 0. So at 0th millisecond, which process did arrive? Process A arrived at the 0th millisecond. So it will get scheduled for CPU execution. So P1's burst time or process A's burst time is 6 milliseconds. So it needs 6 milliseconds of CPU execution. So starting from 0, it will get executed for 6 milliseconds. Now at first millisecond, process B arrived, but it has to wait in the ready queue. As this algorithm is non-preemptive, others have to wait for complete execution of process A. Now at 6 second or 6 millisecond, after complete execution of process A, it will get out. Now which process have arrived until 6 milliseconds? Process B and process C both. But process B came before process C. So it will get executed first. Process B will get executed for 1 millisecond and get out of CPU execution. Now 7 milliseconds have been passed and how many processes are there in the queue? just one process that is process c so it will get executed now now for two milliseconds now nine milliseconds have just been passed and there is no process left process d will arrive at 10 millisecond so from nine millisecond to 10 millisecond cpu remains idle as there is no process at 10 millisecond process d arrives and gets the CPU execution for 4 milliseconds. So it is up to 14 milliseconds. The last process, process E, arrived at 12 milliseconds. So that will get executed from 14 milliseconds for 2 milliseconds. So at 16 milliseconds, each of the process has completed it, its execution. In simple way, this is how FCFS works. So we saw how FCFS schedules the processes. As it is one of the simplest scheduling algorithms, 
its advantages are first of all it is very easy to understand no complex conditions just who arrives first will get executed first as simple as that and another advantage is simple to implement as it is less complex implementation of this algorithm is also very easy but its simplicity is also its disadvantage its major disadvantage is the convoy effect now what do we mean by that let us try to understand using our previous example okay so this was our table and following was our gantt chart let's just consider first three processes for this example to understand convoy effect first let us find out waiting time for each process process a arrived at 0 millisecond and cpu started executing it at 0 millisecond so process a did not have to wait so its waiting time is 0 process b arrived at 1 millisecond but cpu started its execution at 6 millisecond so it had to wait for 5 milliseconds process c arrived at 2 milliseconds but cpu started its execution at 7 millisecond so it had to wait for 5 milliseconds now if we want to calculate the average waiting time we just need to do 0 plus 5 plus 5 divided by 3 that is 3.33 now as you can see process a has a lot of burst time than b and c what if process a had arrived after b and c now let us examine that scenario the table would look like this and the gantt chart will be as follows process b arrived first at 0 millisecond and started execution and finished it at 1 millisecond process c arrived at 1 millisecond and started execution it has burst time of 2 millisecond so it got executed till 3 m a millisecond process a arrived at 2 millisecond but had to wait for c to finish a started execution at 3 millisecond and it completed at 9 milliseconds now let's calculate waiting and average waiting time process b arrived at 0 and started execution at 0 so 0 waiting time process c arrived at 1 and started execution at 1 so 0 milliseconds of waiting time and process a arrived at 2 but started execution at 3 so waiting time will be 1 millisecond average waiting time will be 0 plus 0 plus 1 divided by 3 equals 0.33 so that's the convoy effect if a process with more burst time than other processes arrives first then the average waiting time increases gradually this is what convoy effect basically means so this is how fcfs algorithm works and we have discussed its major advantages and disadvantages so it is safe to say that scheduling based on arrival time is simple but not the most effective way of scheduling the processes so hope you understood things we discussed If your doubts got cleared and you understood the concept like the video and share it with your friends classmates colleagues or any other person who is relevant and for more such simplified and amazing videos subscribe my channel making it simple and press the bell icon to get notified about new videos on the channel see you in the next video thank you